In this episode, I wanted to talk about setting up a central Git server and using Gitalite to manage user access. Git is so popular that it hardly needs an introduction, but briefly, Git was created by Linus Tervoles in 2005 to help manage the Linux kernel development. Over the last few years, usage of Git has exploded, mainly due to the widespread adoption of GitHub, where developers can upload, collaborate, and share their code. In this demo, we're going to look at installing Git onto a central server, say for example on an internal company network, where you and your colleagues can develop together. An additional piece of software, which we are going to install, is called Gitolite, which will help us manage user access. Gitolite is great for things like only allowing read access to certain accounts, managing user accounts per repository, or even per branch. As our starting point, we're going to use a minimal version of CentOS 6.4 64-bit. I've created two machines, a server called Git Server and a client called Git Client. We're going to use these two machines to test the interaction between our Git server running Gitolite and the client machine just running the Git Client. All right, let's get started. First, we're gonna jump over to our Git server machine where we're logged in as root. The plan is to install Git and Gitolite via yum. Git is available in the stock yum repositories, but we need to install the extra packages for enterprise Linux, commonly referred to as EPEL, to get access to Gitolite. Let's jump over to fedoraproject.org where it tells us how to install the EPEL repository. You can check out the episode notes below for the website link. Since CentOS 6.4 is a Red Hat derivative, and it is the sixth version, we're going to install the EL6 RPM for the EPEL repository. We do this just by copying this command and then running it on our Git server machine, which will download and install the EPEL repository. Okay, now that we have the new repo installed, we can go ahead and install Git and Gitolite. Let's do that by running yum install git-daemon gitolite3. You can see that there's a bunch of output, but let's scroll up and take a look at what's happening. So we're installing git daemon, which is our git server, and gitolite 3, which we'll use to control user access. And you can see that gitolite is coming from the EPEL repo. The rest of these packages are just dependencies which support the packages we want to install. After installing any new package, which I might not know too much about, I generally like to run rpm, query, list, and then the package name, in this instance, gitolite 3 And then I like to pipe the output to less, just to make parsing the output a little easier. This RPM command will tell us what files were installed for this particular package. Looks like there's a gitolite command that was placed in user bin as gitolite, along with what looks like some documentation, a user share gitolite directory, some Perl stuff, and then down here we have a gitolite home directory. Gitolite adds a user to the system to help manage remote access. We can verify this by looking at the Etsy password file. You can see that the home directory is in here. There is also a Gitolite group that gets added. Okay, now that we have Git daemon and Gitolite installed, we need to configure a user on our Git client machine, which we can use as the administrator account. Let's jump over to our example client machine, where I'm logged in as the user JW on the machine Git client. If you do not already have git installed, you can do this by running sudo yum install git. I already have it installed. You can always verify you have it installed by running git and hopefully seeing a help page. If this is a fresh version of a git client, then you need to configure a couple things. We need to set up a git username and email. These two pieces of information will be communicated to the git server when you do commits. Git config global user.name and then the username, in this instance, my name. And then we can run git config global user.email and then your email address. These entries are stored in your home directory under the file .git config. Remote access to our Git server will be handled by the Gitolite user over SSH. And Gitolite validates remote access based on your SSH key. Basically what we're going to do is establish a SSH trust between our JW user account on the Git client machine and our Gitolite user on the Git server. To do that we need to generate a SSH key for the JW user if it doesn't already exist and then we need to copy it over to the Git server. Chances are pretty good that you already have an SSH key but since this is a demo I'm going to create a new one. 
We do this by running SSH keygen RSA and then 2048. You can also find all these commands in the show notes below if you want to copy and paste. After running this command, we're asked a couple questions, like where should we store the file and if we want to enter a passphrase. I just accepted the defaults on all of these. The SSH key we are looking for is in home jw.sshidrsa.pub. Let's take a look at it. Now we need to copy this idrsa.pub file over to our Git server. We can do this by running scp tilde, that means our home directory, slash dot ssh slash id underscore rsa.pub. And then we're going to type root at git server colon slash temp slash jw.pub. You'll be prompted to enter the root password and hopefully it transfers successfully. Okay, so we ran SCP, copied our user's SSH public key over to our Git server and it's stored in slash temp jw.pub. Great, now that we've generated the SSH key, let's jump over to our Git server where we can configure Gitolite with this new key. First, let's change user accounts from root to Gitolite 3. Then we're going to run Gitolite setup dash dash public key slash temp jw.pub. This will initialize our default repos and establish a SSH trust between our Gitolite user on the Git server and our JW user on the Git client, whose SSH key we just copied over. This Gitolite admin repo is very special in that we can remotely manage this server through this repo. We can create new repos on the server and manage user access all by manipulating files in the Gitolite admin repo. This might not make sense now, but we'll review it at the end of the episode. Okay, let's test the remote access by jumping back over to our Git client machine where we're logged in as the JW user. At this point, we should be able to run ssh gitolite3 at git-server info. So we're connecting as the gitolite3 user to the git server and running the info command. You notice that we're connecting as the gitolite3 user, but it still knows where the JW account. Gitolite is pretty smart and then it knows who people are based off their SSH keys. Down here, Gitolite gives a little listing of our repositories and our access rights. As I said earlier, we can remotely manage the Git server by manipulating the files in the gitolite-admin repo. Let's clone the repo and have a look. We're going to run git clone gitolite3 at git server colon gitolite-admin. A directory called gitolite-admin has been created. Let's go in there and have a look. Inside the gitolite-admin directory, we see two other directories. One stores the gitolite config, and the other are gitolite user SSH keys. This basically concludes the git and gitolite setup. At this point, we have a fully functional system. But let's try and add some repositories and some users just to give you some real-world examples. To add a new repository, let's open up conf gitolite.conf under the gitolite admin repository. Note that we're still doing this on the client machine. The goal is to create a new repo called foobar. So we just copy the existing syntax repo foobar and let's just copy an access line which just says allow read and write access to the JW user. I always like to run git status just so I know the current state, like if my changes were actually made. Output says the file was modified, so I guess they were. Let's commit the changes by running git commit minus a minus m and then our message, so um, added foobar repo. Let's run git status again. Now let's push the changes out to our git server. We do this by running git push. So you can see it says initializing empty git repository foobar. Let's run ssh gitolite3 at git-server info. This command, again, verifies that we actually have access. Yep, looks like it's working. It's pretty cool that we can remotely manage the Git server all through this Gitolite admin repo. In this next example, let's say we want to open this up for wider access. We let Bob, Alice, and Jeff, our colleagues, know that we have a new central Git server. We ask them to copy their public SSH keys into the slash temp directory. In reality, they can provide these any number of ways. We add users to Gitolite simply by adding their SSH key to the key directory. Okay, let's copy these. Actually, let me just show you where I am in the directory structure right now. We're on the Git client machine in the Gitolite admin repo 
and there are two directories, conf and the key directory. We're going to copy the SSH public keys in temp into that key directory. Okay, now we're going to assign Alice, Bob, and Jeff to our foobar repo. Let's open up the conf slash gitolite.conf file. Let's just add entries for Alice, Bob, and Jeff. We're going to give them basic read and write access. The plus sign here beside the RW means that I can do any type of push. And then down here, just to make it interesting, let's give Jeff read access. Okay, we're going to save the file. Let's run git status. And you'll notice that it says there's some untracked files. We can add these by running git add dot. Then let's run git status again. Now it knows about the files and that we modified the gitolite.comp file. Let's commit these changes and add a message, something like um, added Alice, Bob, and Jeff to the foobar repo. Then we're going to run git push to push these changes to our git server. Okay, to prove that this all works, let's log into each of these accounts and run ssh gitolite 3 at git server info command, which should tell us what each user's access rights are. Let's start with Alice. So you can see that gitolite knows we are Alice, and it shows us we have access to two repositories, foobar and testing. You'll also notice that the gitolite admin repo is missing. That's because this is a special hidden repo only accessible by admins. Next, let's log into Bob's account. We'll run the same command. Again, Gitolite knows that we're Bob based off our SSH key, and it looks like we have the correct repos. Next, let's log into Jeff's account, and we'll run the same command again. Gitolite knows that we're Jeff based off our SSH key, and it has the correct repos. You'll also notice that Gitolite picked up that Jeff has read-only access on the foobar repo. Just to recap, let's take a look at the gitolite.conf file again. Here we define the foobar repo, and you might be wondering why everyone has access to the testing repo. That's because the at all means that all users have access to this repo. Hopefully you find this information useful. If you ever need a local Git server, say for example for your projects or an internal office, Git and Gitolite can be a great solution. All right, that concludes this episode. Thanks for watching. If you would like to get notified about future episodes, please subscribe to my mailing list. You can do this by going to the Get Notified link in the header and entering your email address. Have questions, comments, or concerns about this episode? What about episode ideas? I'd love to hear your feedback, either good or bad. Shoot me an email, justin at sysadmincasts.com.